your left hand in that same place above the arm. And then you go below and above, below and above, below and above. And 10, nine more, eight more, seven more, six more, five more, four more, three more, last two, last one. And then we can do the right arm. Start your right arm under the right point underneath the arm itself, because that's where you would be coming out of the buzzsaw. You're here like this. And now you're gonna go down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. So uh, at the nine o'clock portion of the turn, so when it's on right there, there, well, it hits this part of the turn, bring up, bring it up over the arm, over the arm, over the arm. Down, up, down, up. Down, up, and if you forget, and I'm not there to tell you what to do, here's how you can remember. Just do the big one, which you already know, and be like, oh yeah, that's how it is. And then aim toward your face, instead of aiming above your head. Just come in toward your face, instead of above your head. And up and down, up and down, up and down. And 10 more, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one. So let's do the full sequence. You're here in your buzz song. And you can try this with your little micro ones if it's easier. You don't need to do it big or bigger. And then you tilt it down, tilt it down, tilt it down, and it goes down on the left. And then from here, aim for your corkscrew. What I'm doing is I'm letting my left one fall down and then my right one follows it underneath. So my left one's on the bottom, it goes below the arm and then the right one goes below both of them. The left one's here, goes below the arm and then up above both arms. The right one's here, it goes below the left one and then above both. So you're here, let it drop and up. Let's do it in slow motion. Left one's here. <sighs> and we're breathing. And bring it down lower. So instead of having it up at neck height, try and bring it down more to a chest height. And then your right one's above it. And instead of having it up by your head, have it also below your shoulders or shoulder height. Now from here, do the figure eight with just the left hand to bring it below. So it would look like this, right? It's below the left arm but then the right one is in between both. Which you may not be able to do because that's a whole new trick. <laughs> but, this, but it's the step in the middle. You go from here to here, left one below, then the left one goes up and the right one follows. So the left goes up then the right goes down below because one goes up while the other one goes down. From here, you bring the left one up above both of them and that'll bring you into the corkscrew. When you bring it above both of them, you don't jump it up like this between the arms. You bring it above the left arm. So flip it up like that. Just move the arm position so your right hand is here. Okay. Without the right point. You're here. Then you're here. And then your left point is going to flip above the left arm and the right arm. And the left hand moves above the right hand. So you're down below the left poi, uh, I'm sorry, the left poi is below the left arm, the right poi is between the two arms, the right hand is above everything else, and then you move the left poi up top, and then you follow with the right hand. Hold your right ball here, and then put your left poi underneath your left arm. And then at the nine o'clock so on the outside on the far side on the left side you're going to pop it up over the arm and over the right arm at the same time so over the left arm and over the right arm yes and you just go over and under now what we'll do is instead of leaving the right hand here when you pop it up use the right hand as if the poi is going with it and you're doing a corkscrew i mean that's this motion here which you probably know. So if you just grab your balls and do the corkscrew motion with your right hand, I bet you could do that poi chi and you'd feel it. Imagine you're going over your head if you're struggling. So just to start it, go over your head. Just imagine a clockwise corkscrew. You know this move. 
This is old school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now keep the hands closer together and come in toward your face. Put your fingertips at the ball head right here, like right at the connector. So you feel the weight of the ball moving you through the motion. That might help you substantially feel it better. And now, instead of going up above your head to get started, go in toward your face, just with these little micro motions with the hand, just up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, start again. Go up over the head, up over the head, up over the head. Then come in toward your face, up and down, 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 up and down. Let's try it again, where you go up over your head, and then try and, try and come down like this. So up over here with both hands. Regular old corkscrew, regular old corkscrew, clockwise. And then now we're gonna bring it in toward the face, make it an inside corkscrew, super tight, super tight, super tight. And you could just be doing this while you're talking to your friends because it's so tiny. This is the kind of thing that's really a very compact, oh, I could be doing anything while I'm doing this kind of thing. And I think if you just drill each hand, they, they say there's no actual thing as multitasking in your brain. What's actually happening is you're switching between each of the tasks really, really fast by doing two things at once. So if you're having a conversation with your friends while you're doing this, this will help develop the muscle memory in your arms. And then it'll be easier to get the two of them together. But at this, at this size of poi, you can do it anywhere, anytime, pretty much. And I'm going to recommend for now, until you get the feeling that you go up over your head first, before you try and do this one. So that you feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it. Okay, now I'm coming in toward my face, coming in toward my face, coming in toward my face. And if, I, if you lose it, go back up over your head and then come back in toward your face. And if you lose it, go back up over your head and come back in toward your face. And remember when you're coming in toward your face, it's like this. When your hand is coming up now, when you do over the head, you're, you're, the poi does come above the arm. It's just that you lift your arm up higher, right, to get it up over the head. What you want to do is you want to come in here. So you're still going above the arm. You're just aiming for, like, your nose. <laughs> just, just make sure the poi is far enough for your face. So the movement of going from this up over the head, up over the head, up over the head, Okay, now I'm gonna come in toward my face. It's still above the arm, I just don't move the hand up higher like that. I keep it down low like this. Which means the motion of the poi is less propelled from the arm and more propelled from the fingertips and wrist because you have a tighter, the, the arm is tighter there. So you have to have more fine motor skill in order to get it up over the arm like this instead of that. I want you to look at is the looseness of my fingers. You're doing this where you're like super, super, super tight. I'm loose because I'm able to use, like right now I'm not even pinching. I'm just able to, I have the poi choked around my hand, but like my thumb isn't even, you can see my thumb isn't even touching the rest of my hand because I'm just curling my hand enough. There's two benefits to that. One is you don't chafe as much, which means, I mean, because when you're doing these inside moves sometimes with these buzzsaw type things, you get a lot of chafing on your fingers and that can be really annoying. This will help prevent chafing, firstly. And secondly, it will encourage the fine motor skill necessary to get it up and down.